Hello everyone. Welcome to my weekly Linux news. Athens, February 2018. First off, rise of the Tomb Raider. 20 year celebration is coming to Linux. We start with great news for the Linux gaming community as the latest sequel to the rebooted Tomb Raider franchise is soon coming to Linux thanks to Feral Interactive. The game porting house announced that it is porting Rise of Tomb Raider 20 year celebration to both Mac OS and Linux. This action adventure title has sold around 7 million copies since its initial release, a number that is bound to rise as it gets ported to our beloved operating system. One advantage of the late arrival is that Linux users will get all Rise of the Tomb Raider DLC content bundled in. According to Farrell's mini-site for the game, the Linux port will use Vulkan to achieve great performance and graphics. And next up, Canonical wants to enable opt-out diagnostics in Ubuntu by default. Well, at first sight, this looks like a bad idea, especially with hindsight from the aftermath of the Amazon data leak a few years ago. Back then, it was considered a major breach of users' privacy and had a negative impact on Ubuntu. That said, this time, at least Canonical has been open about what they want to do. Basically, they want to add a checkbox to Ubuntu's installer to send some diagnostics data to help improving the distro. This checkbox will be checked by default, meaning you will have to opt out if you are not interested in sharing data. That data would include Ubuntu flavor, Ubuntu version, network connectivity, CPU family, RAM, disk size, screen resolution, GPU vendor and model, OM manufacturer, location, Installation duration, auto login, enabled or not, display out selected, third party software selected or not, download updates during install or not, live patch enabled or not. Popcorn would be installed. This will allow us to spot trends in package usage and help us to focus on the packages which are of most value to our users. Our port would be configured to automatically send anonymous crash reports without user interruption. The results of this data would be made public. For instance, people would be able to see which percentage of Ubuntu users were from a given country or were running a given hardware. I have mixed feelings about this, since on one hand it could indeed help Ubuntu creating a better product, and on the other hand it could raise some suspicions and annoy some users by being opt-out instead of opt-in. But then again, they won't get enough data without having it enabled by default. And to finish this week of Linux news, LibreOffice 6.0 already close to 1 million downloads. Whoa, that's impressive. So these are some of the stats so far after the release of LibreOffice 6.0. 969,000 downloads, almost 1 million. 661,000 visits to our website. 252,000 visits to our blog. Over 3,500 donations. Hmm, that's good, that's a good sign. 80,000 views of our new features video. 87,000 impressions of the announcement tweet and 32,000 people reached on Facebook. So that's it guys, if you'd like to watch more videos like this one, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. As always, use Linux long and prosper.